I'm just, I'm just so tired of renaming bus back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are here at the Metrics Development Working Group meeting on Thursday, June 6th. Today is my daughter's birthday. Happy birthday to her. Yay. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yay. She's a 6'6 six, six baby. Um, let me share. I'll share my screen because I got this pulled up, I think. Yeah, I do. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oh, there's Peculiar. Hey, Peculiar. So let me pull this chat over here. Hi. Okay. So here's the, min the minutes. If you want to add your name as an attendee, that's great. I'll just drop them in the chat one more time. And let's get right off. Oh, Gary, what happened? I, uh, just... everything's fine. Okay. I, I pulled the wrong laptop. I need to use a second laptop to get on the chaos minutes. And I pulled the laptop that's connected to everything. Just wiped it all, wiped it all out. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll start the bus factory naming while Gary plugs everything back in. Um, so some of you may remember that in our last metrics development working group meeting, we had decided to call bus factor, rename it to contributor risk. Um, that was great. Uh, however, there were some there were some concerns, which I think are um, totally valid. Like in the community call, the concern was that it's it's too broad, um, and that maybe it should be contributor abandonment risk. Um, in the scientific working group meeting, Bill Hoffman suggested that it's not always abandonment, so contributor departure risk might be better. Um, in the OSPO call, uh, some people pointed out that um, maybe we should use count instead of risk because the problem with calling it risk is that big numbers for risk is bad, whereas bus factor big numbers are good. So uh, using the term risk, I think is going to be uh, misleading. So we talked about we talked about using count. Um, I don't think either one of those is great. So maybe we just go with contributor abandonment, departure, absence, something like that, um, full stop. Or we could put factor back on the end of it to make it consistent with like elephant factor. So we could call it the contributor absence factor or contributor departure factor. Now with that, I'm gonna stop talking and what do the rest of you think? I, I have no strong opinions about using count or index or factor if factor feels good to you. I just think that indicating that it is a number that does this thing uh, is, is, is good. I, uh, I actually, I, I politely disagree with that. Uh, I think count and factor are kind of meaningless uh, in, with, with the naming because all of our metrics are, all of our metrics are counts. Uh, I'm not sure what a factor is. Uh, that being said, uh, I wouldn't argue strongly against including it. I realize that there is some uh, factor kind of harkens back to the previous name. So maybe that makes adoption a little easier. Uh, but in general, the factor account, I don't think they add a whole lot to the description, the descriptive naming. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards contributor absence, maybe. Uh, and maybe even yeah. going back to uh, uh, taking it back a little bit further. And I know we, we talked about uh, not using that first part, but maybe it is, maybe it's key contributor absence is a little, a little more descriptive because that's what we're worried about, right? We're worried about our, in, the contributors that are doing work leaving or not being present. Uh, but once again, if we leave off key, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that either. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly okay with everything we have here. So, uh, Georg, I, you joined, oh, sorry, I was just gonna get Georg's feedback. Georg, you, you joined just in time. What, what, are, what are your thoughts? I am going back and forth. And sometimes I think we should just leave it because it's established. <laughs> I know that's not a helpful opinion.
No, you're right. That's not helpful at all. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I'll be honest. Like sometimes, sometimes I feel that way too. I'm like, why did I start this conversation? Yeah, what um, a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I go back and forth. Actually, I agree with you, Georg, because um, on the one hand, it is so established. Like Nadia Eggball mentions it in her books. Um, you know, it is, it is, it is very well established. I just think, you know, in terms of inclusive naming, it just feels like, feels like the time. I like factor because I think you said that, or maybe you said it, Kevin, it kind of goes back to the, that's what we're, instead of bus factor, we're saying blah factor, whatever it is. So at least there's that like factor tie. Um, I also like absence because someone could leave and then come back. So it's not like they're leaving forever. Maybe they had a baby or whatever. Um, and I like Kevin's point about key contributor absence because we're not talking about like massive contributors leaving or losing contributors in general, but it's just a specific group of people that we're focusing on. But that's pretty long, key contributor absence factor. <laughs> like that's pretty long. So, um, <laughs> but I think those are all excellent points. And I agree, Sean, or Don, I think that like, if we're gonna do it, now's the time. And I think in the future, we'll be glad we did. We'll be glad we went through the pain to do it. So, yeah. Well, what if we, so I'm, I keep going back to what we are actually measuring and it is a concentration of effort with the smallest number of contributors. So what if we call it contributor concentration or contribution concentration risk? or factor, but put that this, concentration in there. At this point, uh, we have had so many discussions on the issue and so many discussions and meetings over the past two months that I would like to not come up with something entirely new and then have to re-socialize it to everyone. Because there will be some problem with, with that. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the use of the term absence is that is that the in the collection is, is absence our preferred term there? So some variation of contributor absence. Is there is there any agreement on that? Where is it key contributor absence? Is it contributor absence risk? Is it contributor absence factor? Uh, is there any agreement on that? I would tend to lean toward contributor absence. Okay, so so then the question, and and I, I would uh, I would agree with that actually I would uh, I uh, I think that I think that would be appropriate as well, whether whether there is some variation of contributor absence though I think could be up for a little bit of debate like if we want to add factor to it or add key in front of it or add risk at the end of it, uh, just to, just kind of gauging if there's any any sort of uh, agreement on this call here, or if we, or if we can't even agree on absence, uh, maybe we, maybe the, the conversation uh, needs to go in a different direction. Uh, Gary, you have your hand up. Yeah, I can be okay with contributor absence if we add something, because contributor absence to me is a metric that measures who is no longer active. And the bus factor is talking about who is active right now, but because it's concentrated in one or two people, we have that risk factor. Whether it's risk or factor, I understand the problem with both of those, but I think we need something, not just contributor absence as a metric. Uh, Gary, what did you think? Uh, luckily, exactly what Georg said was what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's how we get consensus. <laughs> Yay. So. Um, I think, sorry, Don, not to interrupt you, but I think uh, contributor absence risk. I saw some comment somewhere. Maybe it was from you, Gary, the, the irony of it being car. <laughs> like we're like yeah, yeah it's not a bus it's a car that, like, that was alice in the last meeting oh and, yes and, yeah uh, yeah 
<laughs> a, a couple folks in that meeting, I'll I'll advocate on. I don't feel super strongly about risk versus factor, but I have heard the comment of saying contributor absence risk and then having it be a number that gets better as it gets higher is slightly confusing. Um, yeah. I don't feel that strongly about it, but I felt I feel that it's important to note that people who use the metric are used to some language. I don't know. I, this is why this is. I'm. You know what? I yeah, get. I, I get it, Don. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think we can call it risk without redefining the whole metric, and that's the one thing that I don't want to do because uh, renaming it is disruptive enough. Um, that I feel like we shouldn't also have to redefine the metric. And if we call it risk, we do kind of have to redefine it. Because so big, I, big I, risk oh, is not good. Um, big numbers. Go ahead, Kevin. I don't have any issue with risk, uh, but I'm, uh, I, I suppose I understand how, how others would. Uh, I guess if we're not using risk, then my vote would be for key contributor absence. Uh, although if, if we did use risk, it could be, we could call it contributor absence risk. And then uh, we can informally call it the car factor. <laughs> uh, but my, so my vote would be key contributor absence. And the one caveat or the one, the one thing that I would add to that is th that will require us to define another metric called key contributor. Uh, which does need to be done, so I don't think that's too onerous of a task. So if key contributor absence on a project is five, does that mean that there are five key contributors absent? I think that phrasing implies that that's what that metric means. Hmm. Well, that's the that's the way that bus factor works as well, right? No, bus factor measures based on this period of time. If this many people did leave, fifty percent of the contributions would be gone. Is it fifty percent of contributions? I'm pretty confident. I could be wrong about that. Let me check. Okay, in in our definition, I don't know that we do. We have a specific. Uh, measurement or, or the example is with 50 percent yeah the formula down in the implementation okay so I if i said yeah it's like go ahead i always assumed it was some variation of like the frito principle or something like 80 percent the 80 20 rule or something I, I remember that from the onion model for the bus factor we've always used 50 percent in general in in some of in most of our metrics we try to avoid having uh kind of these specific measurements <laughs> uh, yeah i mean but... we can definitely talk about redefining the metric i think part of this conversation is that it's disruptive enough to do the renaming versus also then redefining, right? So many people have used this that I don't I don't think we should redefine this metric. If we redefine it, then it becomes a new metric and people will continue to use bus factor to refer to the current definition. And then we defeat the purpose of finding a new name. That, that's fair. I'm I'm not uh, necessarily proposing that. I was just trying to get some clarity on uh the measurement. I guess I, I never realized it was 50%. So that is my ignorance. So I'm really yeah i don't know naming naming is hard um contributor absence factor is the one we keep coming back to caf i think i'm sort of leaning towards contributor absence factor because i think it 
I think it uh, takes people back to the bus factor. So I think that they will more likely understand what it is. I think it avoids Gary's earlier concern that key contributor absence, that that number is the number of people who are absent, which isn't, isn't the case. And by calling it key contributor factor, like a factor is something that sort of, you know, influ influences things, right? So it's um, not influence, yeah, influences. Um, so I I'll, like it as well. Okay. Any strong objections to contributor absence factor? Okay. No. We'll take this back into the community meeting and see if somebody poops on it. And if not, we'll uh we'll call it done. I will put this in the I'll put this in the issue in the meantime and say that that's what we've renamed it to. Do we need to? I think we could just present it as this is what we've decided on. I mean, we've yeah, we've that's what we did last time, and and there were some pretty valid concerns. But let's do it again. This is what we decided on. I agree, Kevin, hundred percent. Awesome! Yay! I feel like we should all, all right. take the day off. That was yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Hard work, <laughs> a day's work is done. That's party. That's right. I know this was difficult, but uh, I think you managed it really well, Don. So. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks, Don. Yeah, you did for real. That was a ton of work and a ton of thank people. You. So thank you. Every time I put myself through this, I say I will never participate in renaming anything ever again. And and you can see that I keep somehow getting sucked into it. <laughs> well, you're a pro now. I mean, when we rename anything, it's got to be you that has to. <laughs> You've done too good of a job, Don. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Does that mean we can move on? Yes. Yay. Okay. So um, I know we've talked about this new template quite a bit uh i'm not sure how far we got with the how to organize this work because i was not here last time so do we have a plan of action do we need to to build one out at least roughly i think we're just going to use the spreadsheets and we're going to track it as we go through and uh and and change them i know matt and i have volunteered to do this and i think anyone else that wants to join in is welcome as well. Uh, I know that the, the template itself is still, it's still got some comments that need to be addressed. Oh, most, most of my needs. oh, let's look at that then. I thought this was kind of set. So let's maybe talk about this. Uh, this I know we talked about in the community meeting and resolved it. So I'm going to take that out. How do we how do we feel about how it's looking right now? Well, hold on a second. Is this the Is there another okay. doc? Uh, so the last time we had talked, uh, Matt was going to take a metric and convert it into this template style so we could see it, right? So here is the link to that metric. I'm putting it in the chat. Perfect. Okay. So the comments on this, are they specific to this metric or are they specific to the? They are talking through the, so this, this metric was basically a, uh, an example of the previous template. And then I have I have made some comments on here, uh, kind of specifically about uh, or my comments are kind of about making the uh, the document as explicit as possible. Okay. 
Okay, do we want to take time in, right now and go through this metric? Do we want to talk about the template? Which, uh, how are we feeling? Do we want to do this without Matt? Because Matt's been driving a lot of this. I mean, I, I don't like holding things off on meetings for a single person, but it feels like he's been driving a lot of the, the work on the template. Yeah, and he probably would benefit to hear firsthand like the feedback and stuff in the discussion. That's a good point. I would agree. I would agree with that statement. I'm not a big fan of holding off for one person, but he is he has taken the lead on this, so uh, I think that's fair. Uh, if anyone else has comments on it, though, uh, I suppose now would be a great time to collect those comments. We have tweeting what? birds in the background. It's lovely. <laughs> what kind of feedback are you looking for, Kevin, on the template or the metrics? So the, the specific issue that I had is that with the overview, what we often, the, the problem that we have with a lot of our metrics is that in that overview or early on, we aren't explicit enough in what the metric is. So my thought is that the, the very first sentence in this overview should very specifically say, hey, these are, the, these are the specific data points that we're measuring. And then the second sentence should be, uh, this is why we're measuring it. And then the third sentence should be uh, something along the lines of measuring this can help us do some sort of uh, improvement, right? So, so those, two, those two second sentences basically replace the old objective section, right? Where it's, it has, this is why we're doing it and this is how it can help. Uh, so with that first sentence though, that, that uh, have, writing a sentence that it very explicitly says what you're measuring uh, can be difficult, right? Uh, and in this case, our, the metric is contributor location, right? So there are kind of two specific data points that are kind of the most important thing to measure uh, or to, to look at when we're looking at contributor lo the, the contributor location metric, right? So we need, to, we need to look at the contributor and we need to look at their geographic location. Uh, in uh, the way we've been doing it in the past, we just kind of say, hey, we're just measuring contributor location. And what I, so what I'm saying is I think we need to explicitly say, hey, we need to look at contributor and we need to look at contributor location. Those are those data points that makes up this metric. Uh, so how we say that is kind of the, what my comments are, are in here, right? Is this, is this sentence that I have up top, is that enough? Do we need to actually have a part that has like the metric where it's where it really like identifies this is contributor plus location? Does that need to be before before the filter section? Uh, does it need to be its own section? Do we do we want to? Can we just add a note in the overview to do it? Is the is that first sentence enough? Uh, can we handle it down here in data collection? If we are handling it in data collection then maybe we need to move that data collection section up in front of filters where we come in and we say this is our overview and then we have our specific data collection strategies and then the filters come afterwards uh, does that make sense to everyone or am i And I've, I've, I've offered a few options here and none of them are perfect. Uh, so, and to be, I mean, this, this, the, in the want to know more section with the, the metric header, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I would prefer to handle it maybe, and I am, and I'm not really a fan of having the notes here at the bottom either. Uh, I guess I would say one sentence that is very explicit at the top of each metric and then maybe moving data collection strategies up to right below the overview and before filters. I think that would address my, my concerns with the template. 
Uh, but then when we're when we're in data collection strategies, I think we have to very explicitly say contributors to the data points and contributor location is the data points. And then any other information that we're looking at is some sort of is a filter or uh, you know, a composite where we're adding more metrics. Kevin, to your point about um, up here in the overview, like the first sentence should say this, the second sentence should say this. Do you think it would be um, visually appealing or, or more clear if we had literally just a bullet that said what this measures and it's this, why we measure this and it's this, or why is this important? And then there's the sentence after it. So it's like, you know, very, very well defined out. Or do you think that I would be okay with that? And I think if we if we go back and look at the template, I think there is, I think that's what the is that what the template looks like right now? And find it, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what we used to have, where we have a specific section for objective, etc. And mm -hmm. my understanding with simplifying the template is we want to have fewer headings, and yep. I. I'm also a fan of structure and I like the first sentence is a description of what the metric measures. After that, I would be more inclined to loosen it up and say it would be great to talk about why we want to know this, how this can help us, etc. But depending on what the metric is, we may spend more time on one than on the other kind of information. And also with the metrics we have, uh, this is to your second question of how to be explicit what the data points are. Some metrics are very precise, the, especially the atomic metrics. Others are more vague and I don't know if we can come up with a rule that would apply across all metrics for how to represent this. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly why we we need to have we need to have this in place because some metrics are specific and some are vague. Uh, and I I think the I think some of our metrics need to be less vague. Uh, I guess is the is the point that I'm uh, part of the point that I'm trying to make here. Uh, if we can't, if we can't, uh, in, in that first sentence, I, and I think I make the note here in that first sentence, if we can't actually describe what this metric is measuring, then maybe it's not a metric, maybe it's a model or, uh, or, or something else. So maybe, maybe that's a point where we need to, to step back and reflect on, like, if we can't describe what we're actually measuring. Uh, then does it need to be a metric? I'm also going to maybe push back on this sentence here because, I mean, the why is fine. Um, who cares about this metric? We, we had this in some other metric we were talking about where we were like, this, you know, all these people would care about this metric, but it's typically the same people that care about our metrics, you know, community managers, maintainers, OSPO, like we're saying the same things over and over. So I don't know that we need to specifically say who cares about this particular metric, because I think everyone would care. I agree to take that out of the metric and have who cares about a metric and why in the guides that Don is facilitating and in the metric models, because those are more localized and geared towards a specific profile where we can be explicit about how a metric is interpreted and used. If we try to keep that in the metric, yeah, we can have all the profiles, all the reasons, it becomes unmanageable. And we can keep the metric definition to what Kevin was focusing on. What is the data? How do we measure it? and how do we process it, view it, filter it, whatever. But just to be clear, we're not doing practitioner guides for every metric. 
like not every metric will be included in a practitioner guide. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with everything you said as well. I don't think uh, the the who cares point part I don't think is important for the metric here. What about the why um, part? I think as long as you have how does measuring this metric inform health and sustainability, I think that covers enough of the why that we don't need to explicitly go into a bunch of detail on the why. I agree. So that third sentence is is a is an example of how the metric can be uh, applied to a DEI related issue. Uh, and that's also the, if we look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the example template, the, uh, contributor location, uh, that is fitting as well. And I, I like, I like that. So the, uh, so as far as the overview is concerned, the the guidance in that the template I think that's great. So, oh, go ahead, Kier. Yeah, I was gonna go back to the different options Kevin had offered in his metric. Uh, I would agree, no footnotes or stars or asterisks that in in the description in your view that makes it difficult for someone to read if we annotate that. The what to know want to know more. Um I like the idea of having at the very top, this is the data points we're collecting. That makes sense to me. I agree. Can we just can we move data collection strategies up to maybe underneath the overview? I don't know if data collection strategies is what we want there, because how we collect the data is different from what the data is. So maybe instead of having a heading, we start out the want to know more with restating what's in that first sentence of the overview, where we say this metric is about, or shows the geographic location of contributors. And we can do several things with this metric, like filtering, how we collect and so on. And that's discussed below. Mm. I don't know. I'm I'm brainstorming with you. I don't like that either. How do we feel about this 200 words? I think Kevin, maybe you had expressed concern that that was maybe too limiting a little bit. What do you What do you think? Oh no, no. I think simple is better. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, I I want the I would like this metric to be as simple as possible, and as explicit as possible. Uh, too I think too many words. Uh, I think the the smaller these metrics are, the more stable they're going to be. So when they when they start to get too big, when we try to get them to do too many things, uh, I think we run into problems. So I, I'm kind of of the mindset that this metric should be the the absolute simplest version of the metric that we can define. And if we want to add any more depth to it, we do it we do it outside of this document in practitioner guides or in our metrics models or uh, with, with this, I think it needs to be as simple and stable as possible. Yeah, plus plus one to all that, I think. And I think 200 words is plenty. I mean, that's, that's like two relatively good sized paragraphs. I think that's, and, and it's not like we're gonna police it, right? If there's a metric that has a legitimate need for a little more context, then it's not like we're gonna be like, oh, no, 205 words, you've gotta shorten that. But I think I think not to exceed 200 words is, is really good guidance. So in data collection stra strategies, oh, sorry. 
I mean, we, we could just add some guidance in data collection strategies that says, hey, identify the specific data points that, uh, uh, you know, when, when collecting data, the two data points that are most important are in this, in, in our example case, it's, it's contributor and contributor location. So at, at, its, at its simplest, right? So we, we could just add a, a statement at the top of data collection strategies that says, the first thing to look at is contributors and contributor location. How do we feel about going one step further and adding more ideas? I kind of like it, honestly, because people might not really know where to start with getting someone's location. And at least we're being a little more helpful than just like, go figure it out. Some, uh, I, I, I'm not completely sure. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by more ideas? Well, I think I, if I understood you correctly, you were saying just to put in, these are the points you need to figure out the contributors and you need to figure out their location. Those are the two data points. But were you suggesting to like to kind of take some of this out and just have that? Or, or would you leave this stuff in? I'm fine. I'm fine leaving this other stuff in. I think that just... Uh, like the direction at the top of data collection strategies could be just like, hey, it's specifically we're measuring contributor plus location. So start with contributor plus location. Here are some strategies for getting that. And then the second section that we'd come down and look at after that would be filters, right? So once you've, once you've grabbed those two data points, uh, then you can start thinking about filtering it. So so if if we were if we wanted to use if we wanted to because we want fewer headers we could take that that contributor plus location bit put it at the top of data collection strategies and then move data collection strategies up to the the top and then the next bit is filters yeah that's what i'm thinking right. like these are the so so it'd be hey we're looking specifically at contributor plus location here are some ways that you could maybe grab that data and then here are some ways that you can filter that data. And then here are some data visualizations. So we have filters, visual, yeah. And then, but yeah, so in the, on this template then it says data collection strategies, and then you have encouraged surveys and interviews. And I would just add some text to that that says specific data points or please include specific data points. Uh, or something along those lines. And I don't know if data points is the, the term that uh, we need to use or not. I know we, we talked about that a little bit in the last meeting with is, and the reason I had brought that up then was because uh, maybe we could have included those data points in the filters section, but filters is filters, filters are other data points that we're, that we're looking at, but they're, they're data points that we're using to filter these other data points, right? So I think that, so those, those changes, uh, I think as long as the, uh, for the, in the overview that describe what you're measuring in the first sentence, as long as it is kind of explicitly, it, as long as that sentence is very explicit, then this template, I, then I, I'm, I think this template looks good the way we've changed it. But I, but I think we do need to add a little bit of guidance on that first sentence, along the lines of uh, kind of what we've been discussing, where like it needs to be this sent, this first sentence needs to be very explicit, right? And if it, if we, if we, if we can't write that first sentence in an explicit way, then maybe we need to. Uh, reflect on whether or not this is a, a metric or some, or if it's something else.
and I and I apologize for kind of I keep on coming back to this, uh, but it's a it's an issue we have with our with a lot of our our metrics is that we just we get a little too abstract. Uh, uh, so when we when we go and we look at them, it's you know we have some metrics where I'm I'm really not sure what we actually are measuring, right? It's just uh we've described this idea of something that we'd like to measure, but we haven't uh, we haven't provided any guidance on what that measurement actually is. And I, I, I get a uh, at a base level, these these metrics need to be very foundational to everything else we do. All right, I have the impression we have worked through some of the questions and agree on the direction. And we can take this back and discuss it again when Matt is with us. Agreed. I don't think we had anything else. Is there any, any final comments on the template or? Uh, I would, I know that this, uh, I don't want to make things more complex, but, uh, I would, uh, I would say maybe we need to hold off on finalizing this as well. If we're going to be doing the, uh, the ISO standard, uh, because if we, if we try to put this into, uh, when we go to, when we go to create the ISO standard, we're probably going to have to edit this again to put this into some sort of ISO standard format. Uh, so maybe the, maybe the metrics template that we land on should reflect the, uh, the ISO, uh, template format that we're, we're moving to. So maybe, so maybe we do still need to have some conversation about what this template would look like in an ISO standard format or ISO specification format. I understand the concern with duplicating work. My concern with the ISO process is that we are nowhere near to knowing what that looks like and putting off making the improvement now. Um, we would just stick with what we have instead of making changes. I think that's a fair, that's a fair point. Well, and Matt's deeply involved in both um, both these efforts, so I think he can help us manage that process. And but it's yeah, also the ISO standard stuff is going to be like years and years and years away. So, yeah, yeah. And I think having a simplified template will help with the ISO process when we get there, because we are trying to combine something more simple than what we have now with the ISO, whatever it will be. All fair points. Okay. I think that's about it for today. Gosh, we did so much. Man, feels good. And finished two minutes early. Yes. Yeah. Now we can take not just the rest of today off, but tomorrow also. <laughs> Agreed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the whole rest of today off. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's like already late for you though, Dawn. Sadly, it's almost six anybody... o'clock. It's, it's time to make dinner. I'm done. <laughs> We're all gonna point everybody who complains about that to Gateorg. Gateorg said it was fine for us all to take off. So, yep. <laughs> all right. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. See you later. Thank Bye. you. See you. Bye.